Hey everyone, welcome back to another Excel Better video. In this tutorial, I'll be walking through some common problems that are going to or could arise when you're doing a VLOOKUP. So I've got five things listed here that you could encounter. So I want to cover each one, understand what went wrong and how we can go about fixing it. So one of the common things that people do is in the actual VLOOKUP, the value that you're looking up has to be in the leftmost column in your lookup table. And a lot of people, you know, could be grabbing more of the table than what they actually need to be using. And then it's just not going to work. So I've got some VLOOKUP examples set up over here. So I'm going to use this gray kind of box here as my sample lookup table. And I've got some different VLOOKUPs that we can use as examples over here. So to start out, if we have an employee ID and we want to be able to look this up based on um, employee ID, and then find their, let's say, last name for this example. Now, if I start typing out VLOOKUP, which by the way, for me, you, you could actually type out the whole thing equals VLOOKUP. As soon as I type in equals VL, I go ahead and just hit tab. Not a huge time saver, but at the same time, it's just easier for me. So I would, I would type in VL and hit tab as soon as I see that VLOOKUP is my only option. So I would hit tab. And then we, of course, walk through our, our four different you know, components to a VLOOKUP, the first one being the lookup value, which we're going to set equal over here to cell B4, where it has our first employee ID. Uh, let's hit comma, and then we're going to go to our table array or our lookup table. Now, if I just select this whole table, let's say I select the whole columns over here. If I do that, and I say, let's say in this table, that this is my first column, so two, three, if I'm like, okay, the last name's in the third column, and then I want an exact match. Well, if I do that, it's not actually going to return anything. And you might be watching this and it might be intuitive that that's going to be true, um, but just in case you weren't already aware, that's just a common thing, that when you're actually, if you have a table set up that you're using as your lookup table, you don't need to be grabbing you know, the entire table. And in fact, if your employee ID or the lookup value that you are using is not the leftmost part of the table, it won't work. So to show what this should look like, we should have a VLOOKUP for B4, and we should just start the table wherever our employee ID is. So if we have this information here, and let's say that we really wanted, um, and I'm actually going to grab this from the columns that way, um, and, and I'm grabbing it from the column because if I actually just grab this information, I would need to worry about locking these down as absolute uh, ranges, which we can do, but it is kind of a, a nice get around that if you don't have any other data below this lookup table, if you just grab the entire columns, then as you drag things down, you don't need to worry about that absolute because it's just going H to J, that entire column. Okay, so now if we wanted to show how this VLOOKUP should work ideally, Let's go ahead and, and show what that would look like. So I'm going to type VL, I'm going to hit tab, I'm going to do B4 for my lookup value, and in my table array, I'm understanding here that I actually want this to be starting in column H. So I'm going to highlight the entire column and drag that over. And by highlighting the entire column here, what that's going to do is it's going to eliminate the need from actually having an absolute reference. Um, so and to kind of show what that means, if I go back to it, so VLOOKUP B4, and in my table array, if I just select this information right here, I would need to remember to hit F4 to make these absolute by putting the dollar sign in front of the column and from the row number. So we can do that by hitting F4 in there, but if we don't do it, as we drag down our VLOOKUP, it's going to actually be looking at, you know, it's going to be shifting this range down. Um, so you potentially could be missing some values. Okay, but again, it's just easier if there's no other data below it to just go ahead and select the entire column. So in this case, we're going to say H to J. And now, of course, what that does is that says that column H is the very first column in this table. So H would be one, last name would be two, first name would be three. Okay. So because we're in this example looking for last name, now we're gonna say that the column is the second one and we're gonna be looking for an exact match. And we can go ahead and copy that down. And now that's going to work and we can quickly check it and say one is in fact Smith, uh, three is Clark, five is Ham, 
and seven is champion. So we can see our last names are working correctly with that VLOOKUP. Okay, so that is number one, the, making sure that the lookup value is in the leftmost in your column uh, or in your lookup table. And another point or another tip to keep in mind that if you are able to, you can always modify your lookup table to make sure that your employee ID is all the way to the left. Or if you have information that you need to be looking up based on a certain field here, you could always either copy it temporarily. So if I need to temporarily move state over here, if that becomes important, we can move that over like so. Or if you actually have total control over your data, you could just, of course, take your employee ID and cut it and move it in front of the table and do it that way. So if you need to reorganize your data to where what you're looking up, if there's a lot of columns to the right of it that you're going to want to utilize, you could take that approach. So I would keep that in mind. Okay, so checking number one off the list. And the second piece here is if your number format is not the same. So let's use this as an example. Now here, we can see that right now I just changed the one. Uh, I changed it to text. But, and by doing that, it looks like number one, I mean, like you see one, three, five, seven, there is this kind of little green uh, triangle in the upper left-hand corner of the cell here. And if we click into the cell, it's gonna give us this little, you know, exclamation mark in, in a yellow uh, box here. So we're gonna see that, and, and that's gonna tell us that even though it is a number, it's kind of alerting us to the fact that it's actually set up as text. And we can even see that, of course, like with our VLOOKUP, that by putting that in, it's actually not working now. And so if you're ever looking at information in this way, and you're thinking, okay, um, you know, it's working for everything else, I see number one is in here, how can I get this to work? And you get it to work by a couple different ways. You could decide that hey, this number one should truly be formatted as text, and so you could go to your actual lookup table and decide that this should be treated as text over here as well, in which case now it's going to work. But in this example, that's a pretty unlikely scenario. What's more likely is that you should actually just go ahead and convert this from text into a number. So if we click on this box, this is one way to do it. We could go ahead and just say convert to number, and if we do that, it converts it from text to number, and we get our VLOOKUP to work. But I'm going to undo that because, you know, sometimes it's not always clear if this is the case. So what we could do is actually just highlight this entire column because you might be looking at all numbers here and you might think that you're fine. But it could be a good check to just highlight this whole column and then go over to data and then hit text to columns. And now all we need to do is hit finish and it's actually going to convert that from text to number. So if we just follow that approach there, one another thing to keep in mind if you just decide to take that approach, it, be, it could be good to know if you actually have any leading zeros. So if this number said, you know, zero, 01, right, if we had it formatted in this way, there might be a reason why you have a zero, 01 here. And if you actually came here and you did your text to columns, if we do that, it's going to get rid of that leading zero and just leave it as a 1 which now is consistent over here, but it's another case where if over here, you actually truly wanted this to be a zero one, that could be a case where, you know, you actually do want to change it over here. So it comes down to, you know, understanding the data that you're working with and understanding you should, if you should be modifying your actual um, data in this spot or in the actual lookup table, but at any rate, if you are getting that type of an error, you're getting an NA, it's entirely possible that your number is just formatted differently. And there are a couple different ways that we can fix that we, we just reviewed. Okay, so that was number two. The third one can be the text formatting is not the same. And so with the text formatting, I've got this over here. And if we wanted to do a VLOOKUP based on a last name, which is what we have in our second example here. Um, so we have you know Thomas, Manning, and Levine that we want to look up. And so let's just say that we wanted to find out the first name from the last name. And so if we did 
let me actually just check. So if we did a VLOOKUP here, I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP B12. And now because I'm doing this based on last name, so continuing from that first example, I'm now only going to care about this information here, so from last name here, or even more accurately from here to here. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to say that I want the second column, and then I'm going to say false. And here I'm getting an NA, but let me just copy this down to show you. So here we can see that there's Thomas here and there's Thomas over here. So they both exist just like Manning exists here and the Levine or Levine, however you want to pronounce it. You know, these are in both locations and they're working just fine, right? However, for Thomas, uh, that is not the case. And, you know, I've actually personally had the joy of having, you know, spent a lot of time trying to figure out what's wrong in a situation like this because, again, you look at it and you're like, okay, I see the name, I understand the columns in the right place, what could be going wrong in this situation? And what's going wrong? And you start to you start to learn that you can be looking for this as your troubleshooting process when you encounter this a couple times. But what's wrong is that if you actually click into the formula bar up here, you'll see that where the cursor is blinking, there's an extra space at the end of Thomas. So all we would have to do to fix this would be to identify that, hit enter, and we're good to go. So that's where it, the way you can do it. There is another way that you can go about doing that. You could say equals trim. So you could use trim in that way. So if we wanted to, you know, if we d weren't sure if how many spaces that were at the end of all of these uh, last names, we could go ahead and hit trim and say that we're going to trim this. We could copy that down and then decide that we want to just paste the values here for that trim done version. Again, if there's just a matter of like three things that you're looking up, you could just manually change it. But if you had hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of last names that you were potentially doing this VLOOKUP for, it could be a lot easier to just go ahead and use that trim. And that trim is just gonna be getting rid of any unwanted spaces like we would have in this instance. The fourth one I wanted to cover is not adding a comma as a placeholder in a VLOOKUP. And I say that because by default, all VLOOKUPs are going to assume that you're looking for an exact match. So technically speaking, because an exact match, which is what false indicates here. So again, if we kind of back this up here, it's saying true is an approximate match, false is an exact match. And if you're looking for an exact match, you could type false, but again, it's the default. So literally just putting a comma here as a placeholder to get us to that point is sufficient as far as the VLOOKUP is concerned. So here we can see, we could copy this down and have false not entered at all. We could just have a comma and your VLOOKUP is gonna be just fine. But if we forget that comma, there's times that it can work fine. And maybe in this example it's going to, but just you know understand that if we leave that off, it can actually throw things off when you're working with larger data sets um, or kind of different scenarios. So be aware that you can actually, again, use the comma. And, and with that in mind, it actually could just make more sense to just always put the false in there so you know that it's there. I like to roll the dice a little bit, so a lot of times I'll actually just leave it off and I'll use the comma there as a placeholder. So that was number four. And number five is just to be aware you know, that if you are copying a VLOOKUP over, that you are actually updating the column that you want to be grabbing from. You know, so if we had here, um, you know, if we wanted to say this is last name and this is first name, uh, let's see, first name, if we wanted to go that route, um, we could do that. And we could, again, say, let's, we're going to copy this over. But we would just have to be aware by doing that, we'd have to actually update our column number accordingly. So we'd want the third column and not the second column. Okay, so those those are a few things that can go wrong when you're doing a VLOOKUP. I know that these are not the only things that could be going wrong, and a lot of times there's just very specific situations. So if there are any things that you guys have been encountering or struggling with with a VLOOKUP, um, or just still trying to learn it in general, go ahead and leave a comment, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. So. Thanks for watching.